Darkwing Duck flapped through the night and onto your NES back in 1992. Developed and published by Capcom, Darkwing Duck for the NES is based entirely on the then newly released cartoon series of the same name. The actual Darkwing Duck show was one of the later shows to come out from Disney in the early 90s as part of their whole after-school block of cartoon shows that featured the likes of DuckTales and the Rescue Rangers. And while Darkwing was never quite as popular as those shows, it still had a devoted fan base of kids that wanted something new and original from Disney rather than just reconditioning their old characters into new shows and settings, which was pretty much the norm back then. Sadly though, Darkwing only lasted a couple of seasons before it ended, but that was still more than enough time for Capcom to crank out a couple of Darkwing Duck games for the NES and Game Boy. But did Capcom do fans good with a quality take on the show, or was this yet another rush job thrown out to eager kids looking for anything with their favorite masked duck superhero on it? Well, grab your favorite purple cape and oversized tando. Yes, that's actually the type of hat that Darkwing wears, I swear I didn't just make that up, and let's see if Darkwing Duck for the NES is worth getting dangerous over. Start up Darkwing Duck and you're treated to a fantastic rendition of the show's intro sequence, which is always a really nice touch for an NES game. Afterward, you're immediately tossed into a quick briefing informing you that some bad guys are totally doing some bad guy stuff, and only you, Darkwing Duck, can punish them accordingly. There is a slightly more detailed story in the actual manual, but it's generally nothing more than an excuse to get a bunch of enemies into a video game for Darkwing to fight. After your super secret briefing, you're met with a stage select screen where you get a choice of three different stages to choose from. Each one comes with a quick description and then you can either choose to keep browsing or go directly to the stage. There are actually more than three stages in the game, however, but you don't get access to those until you've beaten the first three. So get the thunder quack in the air and get ready to stop the worst that the city of St. Canard has to throw at you. Once you're in the game, you're met with a very familiar side-scrolling action game. And when I say familiar, I mean a damn near exact copy of another very popular Capcom-owned game franchise. Yes, if you've ever played a Mega Man game before, then Darkwing Duck is gonna give you some serious deja vu. Rumored to be running on a stripped-down version of Mega Man 5's code, Darkwing seems proud to wear its similarities on its flowing purple cape. Everything from jumping, firing your gun, and just the general feel of a Mega Man game is right here in Darkwing Duck. And that's not necessarily a bad thing though, as Mega Man games are goddamn fantastic, and the same pedigree carries over wonderfully to Darkwing Duck, just toned down a bit for the younger audience. And while it may essentially be an easier, more kid-friendly Mega Man game, Darkwing does at least add some of his own superhero flair to the gameplay, including being able to hang from ledges and dodge attacks using his cape. The whole hanging from ledges thing is used a lot in the game, from getting up and over platforms to maneuvering around bosses. It's a fun mechanic that mixes up the action, but can definitely feel a little awkward, especially when you're still getting used to making Darkwing attach himself to some of the smaller things he can hang from. It'll also take some conditioning to remember that Darkwing will automatically grab and hang from a ledge if you tell him to drop down from it, instead of just dropping to the floor below like every other game ever. Thankfully, it doesn't take long to master, and you'll find yourself getting around stages like a seasoned crime-fighting mallard in no time. Darkwing also gets a variety of weapon power-ups that he can use that are sitting around each stage, allowing him to use his gas gun to shoot such things as lightning bolts at angles, a gas bomb that shoots both ways across the ground, and a pretty cool arrow that you can use to make your own temporary platforms to stand on to reach areas you normally couldn't get to. These are all powered by special ammo that you can find lying around, so you can't just mindlessly go crazy with them when you find them. And unlike Mega Man, you can only ever hold on to one of these weapons at a time, so be sure to keep the ones you like best since they don't pop up too often. The Mega Man similarities continue right down to the stages, enemies, and bosses you'll be going up against in the game. The stages themselves are all nicely varied, and have some fun locations in the city to play through with each offering a nice assortment of obstacles and platforming to keep you on your toes. While the stages do owe a lot to how the Blue Bombers levels are laid out, there's no denying that they look right at home in Darkwing's fun, cartoony universe as well. Thankfully though, Darkwing Duck avoids some of the most annoying Mega Man level habits, like its non-stop love of one-hit kill obstacles and falling off platforms into abysses below. The worst thing you'll come across in Darkwing Duck are a few bottomless pits that some of the more cheaply placed enemies will likely knock you into, and a few areas where you'll need to use your hang move to navigate through some rough areas. The rest of the time though, you should be able to make your way through Darkwing's levels without too many curse words yelled at the TV. Speaking of enemies, just about every one you face will be your standard Mega Man type that you'll need to dodge, take a few shots at when you can, and then repeat until you can take them out. 
Most of the enemies are easy enough to learn, but every once in a while their placement and sudden appearances can send you packing back to the beginning of the stage, since you can only take a total of four hits from anything before you're dead. Every stage also comes with a boss at the end, and they're generally even easier than the standard enemies. Most only have a couple of attacks, with the only real challenge being avoiding them or getting in position to hit them. And even if you do manage to die at a boss, the game is nice enough to spawn you right back at them for another try. Even though all of this may sound like baby's first action game, it's still challenging enough to make each stage something that you can't just mindlessly run through. You'll need to memorize enemy placements and learn to maneuver through some tricky platforming, though none of it is ever super hard, but just challenging enough that it keeps the game fun for any skill level playing it. So yes, while Darkwing Duck is mostly just a toned down, easier version of Mega Man in the gameplay department, I'll still take this any day over the dozens of absolutely terrible license games that I've had to endure on this console over the years. I always kind of felt bad for Darkwing Duck, since Disney finally took the risk on an original property and character, but it just never took off like they wanted it to. And poor old Darkwing is now languishing in the pits of Disney obscurity. At the very least though, we got about 60 fun cartoon episodes to watch and two great games out of it. And going by the quality of other, even more popular franchises that managed to put out some of the worst games ever made at the time, that's actually a pretty good deal. So if you're an old fan of the series like I am, or if this is the first time you've ever even heard about Darkwing Duck, then definitely give the NES game a try. It's a lot of fun, and probably one of the better Disney licensed games on the system. You'll enjoy it even more if you're a fan of the Mega Man series, as this is almost like you're getting a weird spin-off of those games that was about a crime-fighting duck for some reason. But regardless of if you're a Darkwing fan or a Mega Man fan, I can safely say that Darkwing Duck is totally worth scouring the rooftops for.